Hey, this is Cam with Blacktail Studio, and this week I'm going to take you through the transition from when I moved into my shop to where we're at today, about 14 months later. I'll show you some tools that I absolutely love, some tools that I kind of hate and I don't know why I even still have them, some teasers for some upcoming projects, and a bunch more. Stay tuned. You should know that some of the items you'll see have been given to me over the years, but just know that all those debts have been paid and no company had any say whether they're included or excluded from this video. It is not sponsored in any capacity. Also, I've included some little pop-ups that give a price and just a quick one to 10 rating of the item as I see it. And I hope you find that useful and it doesn't look like an ad because it definitely isn't an ad. And if you still don't believe me, just leave me several dozen comments letting me know how displeased you are because YouTube hates when you engage with people's videos. In an earlier video, I showed how I recessed my Sawstop router table into my Mirlux outfeed table. And first off, I don't love the Sawstop router table. I feel like it could be a little bit better. It's not nearly as good as their table saws, which I do absolutely love. The outfeed table itself is constructed from aluminum extrusion. I had it custom made for me. And I love the fact that it allowed me to mount my Festo vacuum clamps vertically so I can slide them back and forth. I can put them on the same side if I want. I added a remote switch there so I don't have to crawl underneath my table to turn that vacuum pump on. And if you haven't seen these vacuum clamps before, I absolutely love them. I love everything about them. You can put different heads on them. It's a quick and easy foot release. You can have small ones, large ones. I think each one will hold like 75 pounds vertically. It is just my favorite tool that I don't need because realistically, you can just clamp something down and it'll still work. But it is so convenient to be able to use these Festool vacuum clamps one of my favorite tools in my entire shop. This next tool is really cool, but it's also really expensive. It's like $2,000 with all the track and accessories that I have, and I don't know that it's worth it. I don't think it's quite as smartly built as a Festool. Everything on a Festool just seems to make sense. This one kind of seems like some things are an afterthought. The power is ridiculous. I could never cut this deep with my Festool track saw, so I like it, but I don't know that it's actually worth the sticker price. I have to admit, I was pretty skeptical of my design for these vertical lumber racks, but about 12 months later, I'm pretty happy with them. I think they accomplished what I was hoping they would accomplish. I don't know that I'm ready to patent the idea and mass market it, but for me, they get the job done. Here is an upcoming epoxy table project that I'm really excited about, but it is going to be an absolute nightmare to work with this wood. And if you have ever wanted to make an epoxy table, or maybe you want to get a little bit better at making an epoxy table, you're nervous about spending hundreds of dollars on wood and epoxy and then your project failing on you. I just released my epoxy table workshop where we go through every single step to make a table from start to finish so we can hopefully put your mind at ease that your project will end up a success. It's something I'm really proud of. And if you want more information on that, I will leave a link in the video description below. You might be wondering why you don't see this electric forklift in more videos. And the problem is I put too much stuff in my shop. I made it too small. So it's pretty hard to navigate it around at this point. So I end up just sacrificing my back more often than not. But when I do use it, I absolutely love it. I feel like a bandsaw is one of those tools that's great to get when you're ready to transition from kind of that DIY home improvement person to more of an actual woodworker because not everybody needs a bandsaw, but I think you'll be really surprised with how much you can do with a bandsaw and how much you will actually use it if you get one. This is a 14 inch Laguna BX. It can cut 13 inches on the resaw, which is pretty crazy for a 14 inch bandsaw. I don't think it's the last bandsaw I'll ever own. I do like it. I think there are some things that could be better. One of the things I absolutely love is this foot brake because I can't tell you how many times I've been stuck with two hands on a piece of wood and I couldn't turn it off, but I could kill the switch and stop the blade instantly with the foot brake. A jointer is another one of those tools like the bandsaw that I think are great to get when you're ready to step your shop up to that next level of woodworking and this is a totally acceptable one. This is one I got off Craigslist for around 800 bucks or so, and it works fine, but the fence isn't very good on it, and I could really use a 12 inch. So if I make one big purchase over the next year, it'll probably be for like a big 12 inch jointer. And if I do that, I'll probably end up just giving this one away to one of you guys. So stay tuned for that too. Also, don't buy any of those commercial push sticks. They work horribly. I don't know why a $7 concrete float works better than any of the commercial push blocks out there but get yourself one of these, you won't regret it. You might be interested or slightly depressed to hear that when I bought this planer brand new four years ago, the cost was $1,900. And today the cost has more than doubled to over $3,900, which is pretty crazy how expensive everything has gotten. And 
While I feel like it's just an okay planner at that price point, what I really like are these IVAC blast gates. And if you don't know what these are, when you turn your tool on, they automatically open and send a signal to your dust collector to turn on. When you turn your tool off, they will automatically close and shut your dust collector down. I have them on basically every power tool that I own in four inch and six inch sizes. All right, here's another teaser of an upcoming project and that is this insanely figured old growth redwood slab. And all I'll say about it right now is that no, we did not cut down an old growth redwood tree for this slab. This was a log that had been sitting for a, something like 50 to 100 years. This next piece is probably my favorite bit of organization and that is the love rack. And it is a big ticket item at like $4,000. It's not for your average budget shop, but I love it because I keep all of my finishes in here, extra sandpaper, consumables, flammables, shop rags, everything is suspended from this kind of overhead roller system that you see here. Each shelf can hold like 800 pounds. So I absolutely love this lev rack. I did have to move this fireplace when I moved in. It was situated right where the lev rack sits. So I ended up moving the fireplace over here against this wall. If you're considering a wood stove for your shop, just remember that they're not quite as inexpensive as they appear to be. This cost me $2,500 just to move it across the shop. They do require maintenance, insurance costs can go up, and wood isn't exactly free. Although these are some sawdust briquettes that I get from Creative Woodworking, which are pretty cool because they were able to repurpose sawdust into firewood. One thing I hope is clear from this video is that I am not suggesting the average weekend woodworker build a shop just like mine because like most small business owners, I'm able to invest a lot more money into a business than I would be a hobby. What I am suggesting though, is that you might see something you like here, like this sacrificial top on my workbench or these small little magnetic bit holders. And you think, hey, that's kind of a cool idea for my own shop. Maybe I'll just take that one aspect and apply it to my shop. If you've never seen these metal pegboards before, they are really cool. They're by wall control, highly recommend them. Although these magnetic strips they sell, they're pretty expensive and they tend to fall off when you move like a heavy wrench or something from them. So don't really recommend those magnetic strips. Also this Bosch 12 inch saw, it's okay. I added the Festool clamp there to keep my hands a little bit safer, but I don't know. I would probably buy a different saw if I was gonna do it again. I don't hate it, but it's just okay. Speaking of tools, I don't really recommend those Stanley Sweetheart chisels are total garbage. Woodcraft saws are just okay, but I absolutely love these Narex chisels and I absolutely love this M18 Brad Nailer I got from Milwaukee. I wanted to show you that this aluminum does have some give to it. If you didn't want any give, you could use some larger stock like I did on my outfeed table. The sacrificial top, this quarter inch black melamine is holding up really well. I haven't replaced it yet and I don't know, maybe I will in the next year or so. This rolling workbench that fits right under there, I love this. It's by Husky. I think it's around $1,000 or so. Soft closed drawers. And I just bought these really cool Japanese chisels, a Damascus or pattern welded, however you want to call it. But they are beautiful chisels, and I'm really excited about those. People always want to see what you don't show them, so I will show you upstairs. And this could be a cool office someday, but... It's got pretty low ceiling, so you can really only stand up straight in the middle. Right now, it's just a bunch of off-cut storage. What I am more excited about, or what I think would be a little bit cooler, is doing a staircase build in the next year. Do like a mono stringer timber frame style staircase. So may tackle that here pretty soon. When it comes to essentially free shop upgrades, this might be my favorite one ever. This is my sander organization. And these sanders used to just get kicked around underneath my outfeed table. Now they're all exactly where they need to be. That Allen key gets held by the magnet, which I also use on my drill press chuck key. No more strings or leather straps dangling around. So if you wanna knock this off, by all means, copy this design. For the life of me, I can't remember why I insisted on having a wall mount for my vise, but here we are and it works okay, but I actually have no idea why I insisted on doing that in the first place. Do get yourself some of these soft jaws though, because I pretty much let those live on there because most of what I'm gripping is fairly soft. So do like these little Amazon soft jaws for the vise. When it comes to shop lighting, I don't think most people realize just how inexpensive it can be. When I moved into the shop, it had these horrible dim yellow fluorescent lights and had a lot of people tell me that I should just convert those to LED, but it was actually less than half the cost to put all new LED strips in as it would have been to convert those fluorescents to LED. And also I had some lighting companies with big marketing budgets. They wanted to pay me to put their lights in my shop, but they were like five times the cost of these lights that I got on Amazon. So I just couldn't do that knowing how good these lights were for how cheap. 
when it came time for clamp storage, I really had to swallow my pride because in my last shop, I had built this really cool rolling clamp rack with my Festool tracks integrated to it. And it was just too big. It stuck out really far from this wall. So I got this wall mounted clamp rack from Woodpeckers and it really accomplishes the same thing with a much smaller footprint. Some of you may have seen the video where my dad and I built an attached shed for the shop. And by that, I really mean my dad built an attached shed for the shop and it worked out really well though. We put a concrete slab foundation, stick framed it, matched the shop roof pitch with the shed roof pitch. And all in all, it looks great. It works great. I now have my dust collector in there. And if you're curious, it's an Oneida five horsepower dust gorilla with smart boost, I believe is the full name. No complaints whatsoever. It works amazingly well. My air compressor is nothing fancy. It's a old five horsepower craftsman that I bought secondhand and I don't have any plans on replacing it. Seems to still compress air. And that's where my clamp rack lives. That is where it now resides holding some yard tools and a couple of pipe clamps. Ever since we moved into this house, I've been planning my shop expansion and I'd had an engineer draw me up some plans, which were going to be to basically extend that shop another 25 feet this way by the full width of the shop and have a walkout basement. So I was gonna be adding a thousand square feet down, a thousand square feet up to my 1200 square foot shop that you see there, essentially making it something that looks like this. So it'd be over 3000 square feet I'd hired a contractor, I put a deposit down. He went to the county and the county said, no. And we went back to the county and go, no, 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 you don't understand. And they go, oh yeah, that's a good point. We appreciate that. No. So every week I like to give a little credit to people who make it all the way to the end of the video. So this week, start your question or comment with either fight it or concede to let me know what I should do about this shop expansion.